I'm sitting here with Adam Crow, the founder of Revival Fitness, which he started in 2010. But he also graduated with an honors degree in psychology, if I'm not mistaken. And, and I really noticed that he's always taking opportunities to learn and grow as a person, not just the muscles, but the brain and the gut and, and all of these important things that we forget are interrelated. Um, we met almost six years ago and he's been helping me get stronger in my mind, in my body, in my spirit ever since. And this is really exciting because when this airs, Adam, this will be the five year anniversary of us surviving Tough Mudder. <laughs> yeah. So that is one anniversary that I never saw coming, um, especially if I was thinking back to that day. But yeah. before I get ahead of myself, Let's start with some questions to get to know Adam. So you started Revival Fitness in 2010 and you have that honors in psychology. Why did you decide ultimately to pursue fitness as a career versus continuing on with that psychology background? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I appreciate it. It's, been a, it's an honor and privilege to be training with you and becoming a friend and getting to know you the, all these years. I could have never imagined that was where we'd still be here, that we would still be uh, talking, let alone training, let alone friendship. Um, so yeah, I had, I went to school for psychology. I started in the business program for two years and I just, it wasn't for me. So, uh, I took a few years off and came back to psychology, something I was really interested in the, the human mind, my own mind. A lot of us go into psychology for our own reasons, uh, to learn more about yourself. The main thing was, was being super burnt out. And at the time I had no clue that I had AD, uh, ADHD. Um, I just thought I was like a slow reader and like, it just took me 10 times longer to learn something than everybody else. And I just muscled through like I've done most of my life. Uh, but I was so burnt out. And so when I was got finished, I kind of took uh, another year off and just kind of floundered around and um, just decided like I got to do something different. So I moved to Vancouver and um, within a year or so, a couple of years, I started Revival Fitness. Um, so the reason I went more with the athletic background, I've always played sports. Uh, I can use psychology in, I, in my everyday life, especially with clients. Um, not like you learn too many techniques when you're in your undergrad, but I'm already an introspective person. And I read, I, I still read like self-help style books or books that will further my business or growth, which I think is what you're referring to. Um, it also is good for conversation. It helps clients too. Like, to connect. Also, yeah, it's exactly to connect. And I, I think that is what, I think that's my X factor. It, without going too deep into it, I, I've always felt like somewhat of an underdog because people will say like, oh, wow, I didn't know this about you. That's a totally different person than I thought you were going to be mm -hmm. uh, in so many facets. That I won't get into him, but the, the, the main one is like, oh yeah, he's fit. He, he's, you know, clearly muscular, blah, blah, blah. He must be an idiot. He might, he, he could, couldn't possibly connect, but I like surprising people. I got, I've just, I've embraced that because over the years it's, um, well, that's, that's always the fun one is surprising yourself. Uh, because you're the only one who knows if you're pushing yourself as hard as you can be, if you're, you're trying your best and, and trying to have that, your own inner kind of yardstick of how you're doing, as opposed to relying uh, on exterior forces of validation. Um, you, you've seen this in action. Uh, people will, you know, be praising me. <laughs> <laughs> when we go for our runs um yep. 
and I and I wonder why I wonder if it's because they are wondering how they could do it in that situation they don't want to think about how that would feel to to be doing that or getting to that point um, yeah, they're, they're thinking how could I ever do that or maybe they're going through stuff and they're like wow like my stuff is small peanuts compared to like pro like they can probably just assume what you've probably gone through in your life mm -hmm. again it's an assumption but um little do they know how far like i know what you're talking about on the seawall just like running and then um they're like like that's just this that's just a tip of the iceberg like if they only knew right so that's probably why you're like oh well uh, why are you why are you reacting this way it's just it's just doing what I do every day. Wait, yeah. till you me, wait till you see me in the gym or Tough Mudder or whatever. So that's why you're probably like, yeah. 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 So I kind of like to challenge people's perspective by also not being like, oh, thank you for noticing. Thank you for, you know, yeah, people. Yeah. I want you to see this and I want you to start, you know, raising the bar for other people in terms of realizing that there's so much strength under the surface that we don't take the time to realize is there um, a lot of the time. So, so yeah, the, I, um, I, I remember when we met and it kind of hit me, you have revival fitness. I have Phoenix attitude. Um, so very similar kind of concepts. How did you come up with the name? for your business? It took a while. It's not easy to name a business, but I wanted to name it something that was, uh, at first I was trying clever ones, but at, at the end of the day, what, what you're helping people do typically is revive their life. So yeah, combining it with like a psychology background and just, um, also, it was helping my life at that time, uh, 10 or 11 years ago. Like, I was just starting out. I was done school. I had no clue. If I'm not doing school, what am I going to do? Um, so in a lot of ways, it was helping to revive my life. So it was multifaceted, but the, the name is fitting. I noticed the type of clients that I attract, and I do believe the name does, does, uh, does factor in. Yeah, I notice that I attract like-minded people who are growth-minded, who might be going through something. Um, but everyone goes through something, so that's easy for me to say. But I know, I had, yeah, and you have no clue how I had. First of all, had no clue how hard it was going to be to grow a business, and it's a pretty small business. Like it's a, you know, there's not that many moving parts. But mm -hmm. like to grow a business from zero to where it's at it's everything that I already have, which is like, put your nose to the grindstone and, you know, kill it. Like you, if for nothing else, you gave it your best shot. And if you fail, then you know, you left it all out there. Mm -hmm. And, and I have, and, and it's, it's, it's worked out. Um, no pun intended, <laughs> no, but it didn't happen overnight just like getting fit doesn't happen overnight. So um, I can draw on that every day when I'm talking to, to new clients or something. It's like, it's not because they, everyone always wants it right now and I get it. So do I, I wanted to be, you know, have all the clients in the world on day one. And I, cause you, you know how awesome you are and you're thinking it's going to be, everyone's just going to know. And it just takes time. It, it, it does. And, and at least from what I'm noticing with my clients, it really makes a different difference when they don't necessarily realize it, but their gut saying, you're ready to grow, you're ready to do the work. Um, and when people come ready, they might not know necessarily what this process is going to involve. But when, when it is their gut kind of leading the way, yeah, boy, does it change the whole dynamic. It changes the whole dynamic. And, 
And as you know, like I, I do energy work as well and meditation. And, and that was really hard for me to get into uh, because I was so used to like the medical world where I knew something had been done or something had been treated or cured because like I saw the scars or I was taking the pills. But when you have that energy work to do, it, you, you don't really know how you're doing. Um, and, and that's really hard for someone like me. And honestly, I don't think it was a conscious decision. I think something was saying this, this, this is hard work. Yeah. But it, it, it's really going to serve you in the long run. And, and I liken it to a workout. How often do, oh my God, the Rambo workouts, um, you know, you feel like hurt so good after you hurt, but you know, it's a growing hurt and that's what keeps you coming back. Yeah. And knowing that, I mean, if you've lived any amount of life, you know, anything you want to do is way harder than you thought. And as long as you find the right people, so, but probably what, you know, why you keep going back to a certain um, therapist or trainer or whatever is because they know it's hard and they, they, they don't, they don't let you bite off more than you can chew so that you're like down on yourself or they, they allow you the space to grow within it. And that's probably, it's an intuitive thing. Like why you would keep going back is because, well, if I can't do it with them, I'm probably not going to do it with anyone. So I better just keep, and I'm sure that's not a conscious thought, but it's like, this is the best shot. So Mm -hmm. yeah. You were the one who actually got me into meditation. Yeah. I tried so many times and it just like was not working. I was just so judgmental of myself. And, and, everyone, and everyone is at first, you think you're, you're like, how do I do it right? But the, 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 the top thing that I can say and that I've learned is uh, there is no right way. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because the people who say, um, and I don't mean you right now, just in general, because I used to say it, the people who say, I can't meditate. I don't know how it's too hard you need it the most that because like, your brain won't quiet down and that's all you're really trying to do. Yeah. Um, and so it's always that type of person who says that um, including myself for years, because my brain races all over the place. Um, but that's who needs it the most. Cause you, you just need to learn how to calm it down and you can calm this, uh, be calm when the storm is, is yeah, in, calm in the air. waters. But, but that's a really hard process when you don't have that practice. Yeah. Um, and you also, for, for a lot of people, when you've had to come back over and over again, it, it, it can be hard to hope uh, that the next thing is going to work when everything doesn't feel like it has until that point. And so that's where some of the resistance can be is I just don't want to hope any, like, I just don't want to hope anymore. I want to come into this like guarded because mm-hmm. I'm tired of hoping that this is going to be the right thing. And this is going to be the thing that changes everything. It, that, that can be a huge obstacle is not wanting to hope anymore because it, it's just crushing when it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. How did you think training me was going to impact you as an individual and also maybe impact how you were going to train everyone moving forward? Um, I didn't know what, because I, I, again, because I come from like, we're, we're going to start where you're at. I didn't know what to expect. I just come in and go, okay, let's, let's get to work. Let's try this, try that. So I really hadn't thought like, Oh, how is this going to affect me? But it definitely, it definitely did. It changed my, it basically yeah, it changed my life because probably for the same reason that, that the people who see you uh, running along the seawall and are like, wow, like if she can do that, mm-hmm. I just saw helping you. And I, I assume you mean like getting to Tough Mudder and through Tough Mudder. Yeah, I just, well, I just thought the whole time I'm like, I don't know how you're gonna do this because you said you had the team in place, right? And I'm like, and then everybody kept on dropping out. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, yeah, I, cause I, you had your team and I knew I was just getting you ready. So I was, I was like, wow, I can't believe she's going to do this. It's like, uh, it's Whistler, uh, Whistler mountain. Like, how are they going to do this? Like, I know we're training, but it's still like, holy cow. Uh, and then, yeah, the team kind of dropped out and you, you had the new team, which was included myself. And so that, that's what I'm referring to. Then that first year that, that really changed more so on, I don't know, like a deeper level. Like I was, I was proud of everything we all did. I didn't think we were going to get through it at times. Like it was. Crow, I really thought you were going to talk to me after. No, after no. Tough Butter. I was just like, oh my well, God. Well, I love challenge. So even if in the moment it's tough, which it was, yeah. and you're just gritting your teeth and uh, kind of hating certain times in it. Most of Over, it. Yeah, no, no, no. Overall, once we hit, once I hit the pillow uh, uh, that night, I was so tired, so exhausted, and all of us probably were. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And I was so happy to have helped you do that because it was like something that clearly was a big goal. You hired a trainer, you had this, and yeah well it was amazing shout out to ivan man i hadn't heard of tough butter was it on your radar as an athlete because i had never really heard it but ivan just had to tell me about it and make that final point that he also knew someone in a wheelchair who had done it so i'm just like okay now i can't not do it because i know it's possible in a wheelchair and and despite what it looked like when we got there and all of the surprises that we had, I swear I had watched hours of footage of all these different Tough Mudders. Yeah, I was expecting mud, but they keep the gravel a huge surprise. Like, mm -hmm. but, but I did have to get to a point where I'm like, okay, you know, I, I need to get out of this alive. We were almost at six hours. Like, I just need to accept the help. Um, yeah. and it's okay. They're not seeing me as weak. They're not pitying me. They're, they're, they're seeing this as an opportunity to help their fellow human reach a really incredible goal. That's what I think got me the most was I know that you don't like being vulnerable at all. And I'm working when, on it when, yeah, <laughs> and much better, by the way, much better. And when you were, I think it was after I might, <laughs> I might have went a little. I said I don't remember what I said, but I, I was oh, like, I, you're, you're, I know you're trying to help right now, but you're 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 making it harder because we were going. Was it through all those rocks? Like there were so many rocks, and I was like, yeah. you're you're every time you put your hands on, it's like putting a stick through a bike, like it was stopping. And I was like, please let us just do this right now. And I guess yeah. it's, it must have been the way I said it, which was probably pretty passionate or whatever, angry. <laughs> no, it was tough love, which of course I grew up and thrived on because of Claire. Um, it was when we were going down the first big hill and we had to do it backwards and we had the bungee cord right. attached to the wheels and, and believe it or not, backwards is safer, but it was still so steep and there was so much gravel that it was almost, it wasn't necessary. Okay, yes, it was partly an ego thing, but it was also kind of a, a survival or coping mechanism. Like, of course I was holding on for dear life, right? Yeah. And trying to steer and trying to like carry my weight on this team because again, because of the gravel, you guys were having to help me a lot more than I had been expecting, um, which, which wasn't fun. Fair. I knew we were there to challenge you and I knew it would be hard for you to just throw your hands in there and say, okay, I can't do this right now. I need help. I don't even know if you realize how even besides like all those kind of things, I don't, I don't think you realized how vulnerable you were going to have to be. Cause I didn't, I wasn't, I just thought, okay, an athletic challenge, let's go. We're all riled up. But that I know that had to have been, I knew why we were there and I knew it was going to be hard mentally 
to let go and to whatever you were going through in all those moments where you had to rely on your team, which is why Tough Mudder exists. But I, again, I don't know if you actually really fully realized, like you got the full, um, the full experience of what it is because it, it's a team, it's a team thing. If you're, if you don't have a team or your team isn't good, you're not going to do very well. And it's not even an event to like win. Mm-hmm. It's, it's camaraderie, letting go, help, help me and it, it just I know it took a lot um I think you were asking in the beginning I had never I had no plans on doing it and I was aware of it and I had no plans of assembling a team to do it I uh it I read like you see the videos you look through the event and I'm like ah, I'm good <laughs> I never thought I would do it I really thought it was gonna oh. be for those times where I, I was just, it was going to be like rocky moment, right? Like getting to the top of the stairs, like this is going to be something that I trained for. And because I did the hard work, this was going to turn out exactly how I planned. Uh-uh. Um, but, but talking about the training, like there was that year of training. Um, and, and we kind of had to, I think, switch back and forth between leading how we were going to figure out how to do the different parts of the training thinking of the or, or or looking at the hard stuff as bloopers really really helps it really helps um it, it reframes it a little bit um and and we had a few bloopers <laughs> in training what was your favorite um it would have definitely been the uh the rowing yeah rowing uh like a wide row from uh, the cable machine and we had to have you stationed further from it and I had to pull the weight to you and the first time or first several times and, and any time I was time a I human wasn't, <laughs> what's that? I was a human slingshot <laughs> yeah and so anytime I wasn't paying attention the second you'd grab on because um you can lift so heavy it would pull you almost through the machine unless I pushed with you and then ran behind you and held, held on. So you didn't fly in. And that's, uh, that took timing. That was, yeah, that one took, I was like, how are we going to do this? I know we can. And it just push, run back, pulled. Okay. Now you can pull. It was, uh, yeah, you almost went through the machine a few times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But we made it work. Like I said, we will, we will figure it out somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. It, it would, was, it was looking back on all of this. It was fun. It just took me a while to see that outside of my ego because yeah. I was so focused on the individual tasks as opposed to the bigger picture. Right. Um, because I'm such a perfectionist and still something I need to work on. And I admit that. Um, so with, with fitness, with growth, there, there needs to be that, well, at least I've found there needs to be that equal amount of perseverance and and willing to pop back up kind of like that, that punching bag that like the inflatable one where you punch it, it falls back, but it like bounces back up. Um, that's, that's really important to an athlete, but, but what I think is just as important is is finally listening to your body when there has been so much resistance and saying okay i've been trying to force you to do something a certain way and and i've kept on coming back to it because you know sometimes you have to try it 18 times to finally get it right but but that resistance can also be coming from a place of you're you're not able to accept where you are right now and what your body is telling you. And, and you need to surrender a little bit. Is, is that something that you found kind of in your training, uh, in fitness, kind of in life, that, that dual purpose? Yeah, you always do no matter who you are, but it, it's always at first you, you have a, a certain confidence level in like your ability. And then if things aren't going your way, that's where you, where all that comes in that mental battle of like, 
maybe I can't do this. Maybe I don't want to do this. Do I really want to do this? And then when you decide I, I do want to do this, you, yeah, you have to get through the mental battle. Typically for me, yeah, it's a uh, meant it's a uh, muscling through almost everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just a harder way rather than accepting where you're at, accepting and stop and not resisting every little thing mm -hmm. and asking for help or uh, going a different route. Like things don't tend to ever go like a straight line up, right? Mm -hmm. Any, any success you have is, and then you make it there and it's never the way you thought. So over the years I've, I have become less muscle through, yeah. but I don't know how much less I still try it. Yeah. <laughs> until it doesn't you're work. trying. Um, and, and I think as athletes, you learn pretty quickly. It may not work the first one, two, three times. That doesn't mean how you're doing it isn't going to get you where you're going. Uh, but sometimes there is a resistance for a reason and it requires some surrender. And, and I think Tough Mudder was like the ultimate messenger for me um, because throughout that whole day, I was teetering between, okay, fine, I'll, I'll surrender in this moment. But then it made me you know, want to really tackle the next one um, mm -hmm. myself, like, like kind of even it out a little bit. And, and so after we had that, uh, that little talk uh, on the hill, uh, we, there was a challenge later on that had us going through a forest. Um, and, and had I been able to be more comfortable with surrendering um, in that moment, I would have seen how lucky I was for the opportunity to have all these guys, you know, want to carry me in the wheelchair, like Cleopatra. I could have taken that as like a little break and, and just accepted yeah. that. And, you know, all these women would be like, Oh my God, you're so lucky. Da, 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 da. Exact opposite. I could, I could not handle it to the point where I said, Nope, everybody put me down. I'm getting out and I'm like scooting through the forest. I'm going to be in control of that part. You guys can carry the chair. I'm just not going to be in it. Um, and we're talking about like fallen trees. We're talking about like jagged rocks. I can't feel my feet. I had to get those like, what are they? Armor type of socks or whatever. Cause I can't feel, um, yeah. my shoes kept on falling off and I'm just like, I'm done with these. They're, they're just decoration. Um, <laughs> When, when I was just so focused on trying to take control of the situation. Not from me. I, I knew that was you. That's your personality was you yep. wanted, you were, we were there so you could complete it and you would have definitely wanted to complete as much as possible. And uh, no one, I mean, in retrospect, yeah, it's up a mountain. Of course it would have <laughs> been harder than like whatever an event in a flat city or Toronto or, yeah, you know, somewhere where it's, there's not mountains. Yeah. But no, I knew that was, and that, that, that's, that's, that's where I, what I'm talking about when I said it changed me. Cause I'm like, wow, like the grit, the, the drive. Um, also it, re it reminded me of me, but I don't think I could do what you do. I'm, I'm like that gal who was on the seawall, who was just like happy to see that floored by you mm -hmm. wheeling faster running and I think about it still, like, I'm like, oh my God, like I, I couldn't do it. So that wasn't going to be me. I wasn't rolling my eyes. I might've been doing that in my head during the time when I was like, please stop. Because you're making this harder on yourself and you could see that and you knew it wasn't a battle worth wasting my energy on, but yeah. I needed to learn that for myself, literally the hardest way possible. And I'm sure the other people who helped, like uh, there was, was it just one firefighter or there were firefighters? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they were like, wow, like she's taken it, like you, you did that on your own. So I don't think any one of them, I'm sure. I think they thought I was would, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't want to do it. So I'm sure they were like clapping in their, in their mind and everyone was more than happy to help us it was it was awesome yeah 
Well, it took me a while to look at the footage that we have because we had GoPros on. Um, <laughs> and, and it's hard to watch myself go through this again, right? Like going through it once is hard enough. Having to relive it is, uh, it, it, it was a challenge for me, but it was interesting to see what I missed and the talks that I missed. And there was, uh, I think it was actually in the forest and the guy, you know, picked up my wheelchair after it. And, and he said, badass, this is such a badass chair. It's the one with the flames. And, and you had my favorite sound bite of that whole six hour day, badass chair for a badass chick. Exactly. <laughs> I loved that. Exactly. It's true. Yeah. And, uh, and it took me a few months, but if, if that wasn't enough to teach me to surrender to this and that asking from help because for help, because everybody needs it every once in a while is okay. Um, we, we, we were stumped for why I had all these bruises on one arm and they were like little bruises and, and it took me months. It was fingerprints um, and, it, and it showed that people were helping and mm -hmm. that I wasn't alone. And I didn't realize that that's what it was. We couldn't figure it out why it was only on one side of my body. Yeah. Um, but, but it was really cool to see that even if this day wasn't working out the way that I thought, it was, it was really impactful for everyone else. And they were so invested in it, whether they knew me or not, we had about 15, maybe 20 people on our team. By the end of it, we took that big group shot, at the top of the ski slope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was that like when it, when it went like straight up, that was crazy. I don't know yeah. how we did that still. I don't know. And, and like, at least that, you know, slope didn't really have any gravel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just only like a 90 degree drop um that one I was just I was just looking up at that and I'm like okay guys I get it uncle uncle this was a bad idea I got it let's wait for you know the medical cart who keeps following me around thinking that I'm a lawsuit waiting to happen for 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 tough mutter because <laughs> I'm I'm getting out of here but yeah. nobody would let that kind of happen that's where my back started seizing up in my lower back. Yeah. At the top, I was like, oh, that. Well, and they were kind of a little sadistic about that because I think they knew everybody was just going to have a crisis of confidence at the top of that. And that's where they put the, 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 the sign that says, oh, do you need like a bubble bath, tough mutter or something? And, and mom was noticing that your back was hurting and she was kind of, joking around oh do you need a bubble bath too <laughs> you, you were gonna kill didn't, her. I say, didn't i say something i said something snide uh i don't know if you did there it was when we finally got to the water where where um you were giving as good as you got <laughs> <laughs> with my mom it was the one thing that i'm just like Oh my God, finally something that I could do. Been swimming since I was one. And it was the one, ironically, the one part of Tough Mudder that Tough Mudder seemed to be most worried about me doing. So like they're trying, they're, it's like five, four or five feet deep with like that cold water. And they're trying to hand me a life jacket. And, and, and luckily my mom's there. She's like, guys, I'm her mother, I'm a lawyer, trust me. She can swim better than all of you guys. You're good. And I was so excited to get into the water because that's what I could do. And yeah. then that's where you guys are like, do we need to go in with you? Like, you it's guys, so cold. She's got it. She's got it. Um, and then when we had to do the block nest monster, uh, Garrick was saying, oh, it's cold. And, and mom's like, what? sorry, what? And that's where you <laughs> made Garrick's point. <laughs> but I had to do a header over those because I couldn't shift my legs around like you could. Right. So basically I just had to have a header twice because there was no other way to actually get around that. And it was still, I was so happy. I was so happy after that one. Cause I'm like this one, I like showed them what I could do. This one was hard, but I did it and I knew I could do it. I was so happy after that. 
Yeah, it was. It was also the last event, so that also could have made it really happy for me too. That well, it was it ended on a win, anyhow, right? It it did, it did. Um, I I was I was just so surprised at ultimately what this had meant to you, um, because I I knew I was taking a huge risk doing this and. And sometimes I'm like a dog with the bone and, and I bite off more than I can chew. And so it was a hard process for me, but I, I didn't realize what it could mean if I let it be what it was. And, and that's really what I understood from, from you kind of encapsulating that year. Um, we should have ended with the team dinner because <laughs> that was good yeah. but but if you don't mind I'd love you to like read back what you wrote the day before sure or um if you you yeah you want me to read it you don't want to read it no oh boy here we go <laughs> as I sit here and reflect on this past year of my life I realize how much I've grown as a man as a trainer and as a business owner I realize completely that this is what it's all about this is why I train people for a living to help people realize their potential to go on the wild ride with them I didn't realize it was going to do that like um until we were done so it's not like I had that planned it's not like I was like, this is why I'm doing this. You, you, any time in life that you, someone feels that way or it moves them, it's always after the fact because they didn't realize mm -hmm. the other stuff, the intangibles and the other stuff that was going to happen and, and helping someone do that. Or even if you, even if it was like me training it for myself and I completed it, it wouldn't just be like, that's awesome. I did it. I'm sure there would be a whole bunch of emotional components like, wow, it was so hard. But I just remember how hard you worked, how hard we worked, how hard it ended up being, how hard mm -hmm. it was for you to be vulnerable. And just, I knew that was going to be tough because I got to know you over that year and it, it changed me in the sense that, um, I think I became more sensitive to people, more sensitive to myself, more forgiving of the things that I can't do. Um, more accepting, of it's not like I don't accept clients but like more accepting of the things they can't do as well and let them have that space and and try to like draw on that to help them get through the stuff that they're upset like for most for a lot of clients like say doing push-ups is very hard for them and they get down on themselves like oh I can't do them and so moral of the story is it takes vulnerability to say stuff like that out loud. And so I didn't appreciate it till like that moment, like, or like that's their tough mutter sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So being vulnerable to, and, and I hope that I now allow people the space to feel that way. I think I always have, but I hope that it got better because mm -hmm. I was, did you say six, five years ago? It's five been years ago. five years since tough mutter. Yeah. Uh, it'll be six years since we met um, on August 1st. I can say that I think it has because I, I feel like, and this is just a, it's not really the measure, but it's the one that I can hold on to. I keep clients for longer now. So I must, that, that, that definitely changed me. It must've changed something where I can relate that much better, that much, you know, whereas I would just maybe be a little more tough or like, uh, push them through or like maybe say the wrong thing and not realize it mm -hmm. where they just might've just needed like, well, that's okay. Just don't worry. Next time we'll get it. If you don't even want to do it, that's fine too. But they usually always, like, people do like challenges, so they do come back to it. But whereas maybe in the past I would have been like, come on, let's just, let's just try it. Uh, th it's the next round. Let's try it again. The next round, let's try it again. Mm -hmm. I don't care how far you get, but that might, even that pushing thinking and me thinking I'm encouraging them could be like, like hurting them somehow. Like, Oh, I can't do it. Don't, doesn't he get it? Like, 
So I'm much more like, it's probably vulnerable for them to say that to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't do it right now, or I don't want to do it or whatever, whatever the statement is. So, Hmm. well, I, I, I swear I took in the message that night and, and I absolutely felt the exact same way. Um, but, but I still haven't integrated it. I should have like printed that out and, and taped it to each one of your guys' back. Cause I was always behind someone at least. And I need, and I, and I, 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 I would have benefited from being reminded big picture, big picture, stop stop getting angry at the small details or what you think are, are these make it or break it moments. Cause they're not, it's the mm-hmm. big picture. Um, and, and I think that at the end of this, we, we, I, I want to support people feeling like it's okay to be vulnerable, that it can actually as hard as it is. Um, and there is that element of being ready to do it. Um, but but when you can it can actually have you reach higher like goals for yourself um and and i think it can be really hard being the person that is having someone say they're vulnerable um to be that other person because we we want to figure out what to what to say, what we should be saying, right? Like they're, to make it better and, and to, to receive that. And, and what I've learned, especially doing crisis counseling is that when we have someone being vulnerable with someone else, um, you, you can be really helpful just by letting them know that they might not know how to get you out of it right now, but they'll be with you in the dark. And, and, and that's really powerful, even though it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot. Um, but also one of the, the great rewards of being vulnerable <laughs> is, is the fact that we get to see that we're not the only ones going through a lot of the stuff we go through in life. Someone's been there before um, and, and you're not alone doing this, which was very Tough Mudder-esque. And, and so I... I you're going to roll your eyes and that's fine with me. Um, I think that I want to finish this by quoting the West Wing. So there, there was like this scene, one of the staff had been dealing with PTSD, but didn't know it and also didn't want to address it because he thought he'd lose his job as, you know, someone in the white house. And he didn't realize that other people were starting to notice the things that he didn't want them to know and, and he felt weak. And so when his boss found out what he had been through, um, he, he was so pissed off that, that the younger guy didn't say anything to him, right? And, and, and he said this, this guy's walking down the street when he falls in the hole. The walls are so steep, he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shuts out, hey you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hole and moves on. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts out, father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole and moves on. Um, Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. And the friend says, yeah but I've been here, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. Um, man, oh man, when, when we get comfortable with ourselves and, and who we are in that moment and, and know that we will constantly be looking for opportunities to grow, um, it, it, it's really nice to know you're not alone in this. And, and, and that's, that's how I felt at the end of this. So I wanted to say thanks for getting down in the mud with me, even if we didn't know that there was going to be a way out. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. That's uh, that's that's a perfect quote or story. Or I have it on a mug. I have it on a poster. Um, 
I, I think I'll get a shirt and a hat and all of that. I love that message. I love, I love that show of support for other people um, and what can happen when you do see an opportunity to maybe try and let someone in. Yeah, and, and you probably now do that every day when you talk to your clients. I know that that's basically what I realized in my post there is you're there to, ha- you're there to, I, I see the way and I can help and they don't feel like it or you didn't feel like, how am I going to do this, blah, blah, blah. Because um, oh, oh, we don't have most, because the way society is, we don't have those people usually or we're not vulnerable enough to be like, ask for help or <clears throat> so people don't know and we all try to muscle through, I feel. But most of us just need someone to be like, I get it. They're there with you. And it does help if it's a coach or a therapist or whatever who sees, they, they know how to get you there is basically what that's saying. Um, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta let your, you gotta let those people in. You gotta um, let your guard down. And, and unfortunately to also do that, you have to accept it for yourself first. Yeah, it's true. It's the only way you know you need help, you need help is when you realize it for yourself. Um, and, and as I, you know, with the clients, I, I've had many of them say, you know, I, I was told I needed to get help. I was told to get help. And, and they, oh, so many people see it as an insult or yeah. Um, yeah. criticism, you know, and it hurts them even more when they hear it from their partner or from their parent. And, and, and ultimately what I see that as is ultimately a sign of surrender for them because they realize they don't have the skills to help this person appropriately and they don't want to cause any more harm to what they're going through by saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing since they don't have the skills. And, and it really does help having a village behind you who can each help you in different ways. And, and then that way the partner gets to stay the partner, the parent gets to stay the parent, but there's also the counselor in place who gets to be the counselor, the mom. Um, so, so if we can see those opportunities uh, as, a, as, as a sign of new beginnings, as opposed to criticism, it's okay to need help. And it's okay to find what works for you and what doesn't and, and get specific help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Self-awareness, or at least they're aware they're telling you. So hopefully the people who get told, Oh, I got told to have to call you. Hopefully they're ready. Cause at least if they, I guess if they make the call, they're somewhat ready, but it's better if you're like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I need help. I don't know. I, what I'm doing is not working. That's the best one, right. To help people change. But hopefully those people who come knocking on the door, who got told to go to that door, that they're at least 50% and then you can help them get a hundred percent. Yeah. And it's a process. If they're not ready, sometimes you feel like you've done nothing um, because all you've done is listen. And sometimes that's all people are ready for is just to talk and they're yeah. not ready to hear opinions um, or, or start the tools. They, they, they're only ready to at least unload that and share that. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I can tell when clients are ready versus when they're trying to get ready or they're feeling forced into it. Yeah. That. Yeah. And as the years go on, you'll, it's same thing in, in my business. Yeah. I just, you see it and you're like, you weren't ready. That's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then the people who are ready, they, they listen, they ask questions, they ask for more. They, there's a, there's different MOs and it's fine because at least if you get someone who's not fully ready, they know where to go when they are. Yeah. Hopefully you are who they call. And even if not, you got to, sometimes you just got to try the first time, first go around and you're like, hopefully they go, I really wasn't ready, but now I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Trial and error. Trial and error. Okay. Well, thank you so much for for sitting down with me. That hey, you're welcome. Anytime. Vulnerability. It's a tough mutter. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, thank you. And uh, anytime.